Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the theory of probability. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example problem uh, which requires the law of total expectation. Uh, well, it doesn't require the law of total expectation, but which has a very nice, simple solution if you law use the law of total expectation. Okay, so this is going to be an example of how to use the law of total expectation. Okay, the law of total expectation. So I'll begin by explaining uh, the problem, and then we'll discuss the law of total expectation and how it can be used to solve this, and then we'll solve it. Alright, so here is the problem. You have given a stick. So let's say here is a stick of length 1. So you have a stick of length 1 here. And basically, initially what you have to do is you have to break the stick into two pieces and you have to choose the point at which you break the stick. So you make your first break of the stick. So let's put our first break of the stick here. And we're going to suppose that the, suppose that the point at which we uh, make our first break of the stick is going to be uniformly distributed on 0 to 1. Now, uh, i.e. that we are equally likely to break the stick at any point between 0 and 1. That is not true, obviously. If you've ever broken a stick, you know that you are not very likely to actually break the stick um, over at the um, edges. You're far more likely to break it down the middle. However, for the basis of this problem, uh, we're going to assume that you are equally likely to break the stick at any point. So we'll assume you're chopping the stick with a chainsaw, and you know, um, you can chop it wherever you like, basically. Uh, so you're equally likely to pick any of the um, points on the stick to break. Now, after you've uh, made your first break of the stick, you are then left with a shorter stick. You chuck away, um, you chuck away this portion here from the first break to one. So that bit goes away in the bin, uh, or in the fire, or whatever. And uh, the the other bit, the bit from zero to the point of the first break, this bit here, that remains. You keep this bit of the stick. Now, what you do, the stick you haven't finished yet. You're going to do something else with this stick. You're going to break the remainder of the stick again. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to choose a second point to break the stick here. And what we want to know is what is the expected distance of that second break point from zero, uh, from zero basically. I mean, what is the length? What is the expected length for this, basically? Okay, and we're going to assume that, uh, again, when you've got your green stick, uh, the point at which you make this second break is uniformly distributed. Okay, so how might we go about tackling that problem? Well, let's say we put into our probability space here, we forge an abstract probability space here, which contains all possible outcomes of doing this experiment. So it contains every possible stick here. So let's have our stick here. And it contains every possible position that you could put the first break, and then every possible position that you could put the second break. Okay, so in this probability space, I have put in every, every single possible outcome of doing this experiment, basically. So the first break could be anywhere from 0 to 1, and for every possibility, possible place where you put the first break, you have all the possibilities from 0 to that point at which the first break is, for where you can put your second break, basically. Okay, so that's what this probability space consists of at the moment. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a random variable. So I'm firstly going to set up the random variable x. And this random variable x is going to map any outcome. So it's going to take an outcome like this, and it's going to map it onto uh, the point at which you make the first break. So it's going to map it onto the value between 0 and 1 where you put this first break. So um, how shall I communicate that? Uh, first break point output. So it's going to map you onto a real number between 0 and 1. And the way it's going to decide what real number to map each outcome onto is that it's going to look at where the first break point was and it's going to map you onto that value. So therefore, it's going to map you onto a value within the interval 0 to 1. OK. And I've already told you that I am assuming that you are equally likely to have picked any point between 0 and 1 
to be your first breakpoint. So we know how this is going to uh, be distributed, basically. We know that it's going to be uniformly distributed on the interval 0, 1. So this random variable x is uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 1. Right, OK, so just a li little bit of a recap. Remember, in this probability space, there are absolutely loads of positions for where the first... Uh, there are absolutely loads of possibilities for uh, the outcome of this experiment. So, for instance, if I draw on another one here, here's the stick again from 0 to 1, and let's say this one has the same first breakpoint, but it has a different second breakpoint. Both of these outcomes, this is what I'm trying to say, both of these outcomes will be mapped onto the same first breakpoint. So there are going to be absolutely loads of different outcomes all mapped onto the same value by x. Now, overall, if I ask what is the probability that the first breakpoint is at a certain value between 0 and 1, it's uniformly likely to be anywhere, basically. So all of this sort of all of these different outcomes which are mapped onto the same value, all of that's taken care of. You don't need to worry about it. It's sort of it's sort of fading that into obscurity. It's like you've never made the second break. As far as this, uh, as far as this first random variable x is concerned, it's, it is almost as though you have never made this first break. Okay, right. Now let's also have the random variable y, which is going to uh, it, it's. Uh, Sorry, did I say it wasn't as though you've never made the first break? It's as though you've never made the second break. Now, where is what's the probability that you get a certain point for the first break? Forget that you've made the second break. What's the probability that you've made uh, that you've made that the point at which you make the first break is at a certain value between zero and one? What's uniformly likely to be anywhere? Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, right. Now, this random variable y, you can guess probably what this is going to do. The random variable y is going to take any outcome and it's going to map it onto the point at which the second break occurs. Point at which the second break occurs. Which second break occurs. OK, so we do not know yet how y is distributed. OK, but we know that it's going to be mapped onto some value between the interval, within the interval 0 to 1. OK, so in this case, this um, outcome here will be mapped onto whatever value this uh, second break was made here by this random variable y, and this one will be mapped onto a different value of y. So now what we can consider is the joint random variable xy, which is mapping every single outcome not onto a single real number, but a pair of real numbers. So it's going to map you onto an ordered pair of real numbers within the in within the um, within the set R2, okay? So xy is going to map you onto specifically, it's going to take any outcome, and it's going to map it onto the ordered pair x of s, where x is the value that x ascribes s, and y of s, where y is the value that the random variable y ascribes s. Okay, so if we now think about what subset of R2 this joint random variable actually maps you onto. So let's say here over here is R2. What subset of R2 can you actually be mapped onto by this joint random variable xy? Well, firstly, x of s and y of s both have to be within the interval 0, 1. So if this is x and this is y, then you are instantly delimited to the um, square from x has to be within this interval 0 to 1, and y also has to be within the interval 0 to 1. So you are instantly delimited to this square here. So you can't go out of that square. Okay. So that's our first restriction, so I'll highlight that. But if you think about it, there is more restriction here than just that square, because y ascribes you the point where your second break was, and x ascribes the point where your first break was. But we have another requirement up here. Can the second break be somewhere like over here? Let me draw it's not in there. If I've got this stick here, and let's say I make the first break at 0 0.5, can the second break be over here? Can it be 0 0.75? No, it can't. It has to be less than uh, the first break. So what we know is that y, the value at which the second break occurs, has to be strictly less 
than x. So that means if we draw in the line which is y is equal to x, so this is the point, the, all the points uh, at which y is equal to x. Now all the points down here satisfy the condition below this point, uh, below this line basically. All of those satisfy the condition that y is less than x. Whereas if you're up here, your y value, as you can see from this picture, that your y value is going to be bigger than your x value. So this is your x value and this is your y value. Whereas if you're below this line in this triangle, your y value is going to be smaller than your x value. So basically, our, um, our set of interest is this triangle here, all points that are below this pink line, all points within this triangle, basically, that are within the green line, within the, within the two green sides, and within the pink side. So any point within that triangle is a possibility. So this, uh, we can represent all of the outcomes in here by a point in here. And if you think about it, every outcome in here is going to be represented by a unique point in here. So this joint random variable here is very nice because it's actually a bijection. It's taking every outcome and it's mapping it onto a specific point within this triangle. And if you look at a specific point within this triangle, there is a specific outcome back here that, uh, uh, that refers to that. Because if you think about it, if you take a specific point here, that has an x value and it has a y value. So that instantly tells you where the first break was, because x of s tells you what the first break was. And it instantly also tells you what the value of the second break was. So it completely specifies a, um, a outcome in here. So this is a very nice random variable, because it's not, it's not, um, it's uh, it's bijective basically. It's one to one and onto. So it maps you onto this triangle, and that's very very nice. So we can represent every single outcome here by a point within this triangle. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.